Welcome back, everyone. We are going to start the next session. And uh, I have a new guest here. Gaurav Mishra is joining us today. Um, I'm very excited about this talk. It's about, uh, <clears throat> sorry, it's about future of digital exper experiences. Gaurav is the senior director uh, and digital experience at Material, and he has over 15 years of experience in working with enterprises globally on, multi on building uh, customer and employee experiences. And we had a little chat in the, in the backstage, and there are some very impressive companies you work for, but please introduce yourself. No, thanks, Joey. Absolutely. Um, hi, everyone um, who's listening. I can't see you, um, but uh, but thanks for joining in. Um, I'm I'm Gaurav Gaurav Mishra. I've been in the industry for 15 plus years. I work with Fortune 500. Um, we as material we serve 70 percent of the Fortune 500. So from Apple to Google to Facebook to Amazon, everybody is a customer. And uh, you know my role is essentially to work with these large enterprises to build digital experiences and customer experiences. Um, um, I worked with Estelle Order, Staples, uh, Johnson Johnson, Yamaha, you know, and others, others over the last few years. So I do have some experience on that. Love to share with you. Um, you know, do ask the questions, and would love to take that up. Uh, you know, once once we are done with the the, the presentation. So I'm trying to share my screen. Uh, and Joey, help me to understand if you can see the screen. I guess you can, right? Okay. Oh, we can. We can see everything. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. Great. So, future of digital experiences, multi-experience marketing. Um, you know, before we jump in 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 the talk, right? Quick. Uh, you know, logistics. Here's my Twitter at Gmishra, Right. My if you you know want to re reach out to me. If you want to uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn, you can just type in gmishra.com and it will redirect, redirect you to my LinkedIn profile and you can send me a connection request from there. If you want to ex you know, use the slides or um, you know, want to look at the slides after the call, uh, after this uh, you know, session, uh, you can use this link to essentially access the slides. Um, it's open for everyone and everyone can use it you know, however they work with, the way they want. Um, you know, before I jump in right into the talking about what is multi-experience marketing, um, you know, what why multi-experience marketing is the future of digital experiences, let's talk about some of the companies uh, that have done that before and how they have done it, right? Uh, it will just help to set the context of what I'm talking about in terms of the actual uh, use cases or implementations, if you will, right? So Disney, right? Disney is, is one of the clients for us um, at Material. Uh, Disney, if you ever been to Disney, um, you know, uh, rides, you know, in the Disneyland, you'll see a magic band, right? Uh, which essentially allows you to go in, you know, connect with rides, give you a fast path access, um, you know, and essentially, you know, help you in dining reservations, entertainment times and things like that, right? It allows you to pay for the rides, access rides, unlock rooms. And it becomes, it can be extremely personalized, right? Recommend from a recommendation point of view, it can recommend which ride you should take, what you should eat, and anything like that. You know, it's a very good, you know, example of a digital touch point, right? But it's still, you know, physically, you know, attached, you know, with your body in in a in a, you know, in the in a, in a matter of wristband, right? Essentially, so a very good example of a multi experience uh, that you can see. Another is uh, a company called Timberland, right? Um, if you've been, if you're a fan of hiking, if you're a fan of camping out, you you, you must know that uh, this is company name for sure. And uh, if you, um, you know, ever visit the store, uh, you'll see that, you know, there are like large, you know, catalog of, you know, items on, on, on a particular wall. And, you know, you can go in, uh, you know, a particular, uh, near a particular shoe or near a particular, you know, jacket and things like that and it will actually give you the entire information about that particular product and will recommend you uh, that okay if you want to if you like this particular shoe you know um, you know you would probably like this particular jacket as well this particular you know i don't know uh, other st stuff as well other products as well it uses something called a near field um, you know rfc codes 
uh, which allows you to you know create this you know personalized in store experiences right another very good example of you know how you can essentially create multi experience marketing digital but still you know a different kind of experience from a web or mobile if you will right that we that we all know of let's take off a third example right where is this right so you know if you uh, you know it's it's essentially around you know very very big in london right and you if you if you're trying to you know go in and you know understand where you have to particular go right you can you know you can essentially access their maps and with that particular maps right you can find very personalized you know coupons you you know personalized uh, you know recommendations and you know so you know it's it's a very good example of geo fencing right your recommendation engine right so you're you know you're still going into a physical store but basis on what physical store you are going right uh, you would essentially have a you know very recommended you know very very good personalized recommendation experience coming in with with oasis you know another geo fencing uh, you know multi experience touch point if you will um rai again if you're a fan of camping um, you know you would know rai for sure it's it's the, the it's the apple of you know the camping products if you will and it's a very you know it has some very seamless offline to online communication right you'll see a ad in a in a magazine right uh, you know well you'll scan the qr code in that particular magazine it will take you to the um, to 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 a website you know once you go to the website you'll probably select some products or you know browse some products and then you can you know take that same experience to uh, you know your mobile app right it will know exactly what you read in the magazine to what you have you know browsed on the website to what you have access on the mobile app and then you know if you go into the store and you you access their kiosks they have a, like a large you know you know kiosk centric stores all over us you will essentially find that you know it will take their that entire experience and it will know that what exactly have you read on the on the magazine to the to the website to the mobile app and it will give you the give you the give the give you the exact product that you would want to buy at that particular point of time right so it really you know captures your entire omni channel experience very well and i'll talk about the omni channel versus multi channel a little later on uh, once once we go into a little more detail um you know another you know company called aptos right it it it's a, it's a it's a different kind of multi experience right uh, something that they have worked upon is called a social crm um, where they capture a lot of personal information of you know of the customer that walks in the store right so somebody who is behind the desk who is essentially understanding you know you know who is essentially servicing a customer will understand very well that you know when is the birthday of the customer when it's the you know anniversary you know what the, what are they what do they like what do they not like and things like that so when he's talking to the customer he or she will essentially um, you know uh, customize their entire pitch entire experience right on the basis of their likes and dislikes right so it's a very very good example of a social crm done like so the entire conversation is happening in person in store in real life but there is a digital you know touch point which is on the back end which essentially is enabling a very personalized experience to happen between the customer um, and 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 the store owner or the store manager or, or, or the store you know person essentially uh, so very good example of the multi experience marketing uh this is another company called top shop um which uh, did a very interesting contextual experience marketing a uh, few years back right uh, what they did is that uh, there was a there was a fashion show happening right and so top shop is like a you know apparel shop right you can buy clothes and and, and things like that online or via top shop uh, but what they did is that there was a fashion show happening and you know they were partnering with the fashion show the fa- the fashion designers in that particular show to essentially sell their products you know exclusively on top top shop right uh, but the way that they essentially worked is that they had a big billboard right right outside the you know uh, the place where the fashion show was happening and as the fashion models were you know coming on the ramp walk they were you know you know essentially putting all their products all their apparels on that particular billboard screen with mixing and matching and essentially allowing people to come in and you know shop 
you know, see that in real time as the fashion models are walking and essentially take that experience and start doing the fulfillment, uh, you know, from their, from their website itself. Right. And it was a very, very big hit. Right. Um, because, you know, you can, you know, you can do the fulfillment, right. 10 minutes walk, right. From, you know, from, from the particular, uh, experience that is happening. Right. So that's a very good example of a contextual experience, multi experience in my, again, what I see and what you will see in all, all of these you know, examples that all of these examples are not your typical web and mobile examples. It is essentially finding a different touch point, right? In, in, in the real world with the, you know, with the, with the, with the touch point of a real world and essentially creating a different experience or multi experience marketing where it is taking the, the information on the web, the mobile and essentially taking it to a different level in, in the real world. McDonald's, right? you know, uh, the king of the turnkey business. And I'm sure if you have walked into a McDonald's today, right, you'll see kiosks, which, you know, and most of the orders are essentially, um, you know, happening via this, this particular kiosk, right? They've also been experimenting with voice-based, um, you know, uh, and they've acquired a voice-based startup sometime back called Aparente. And they, you know, they're essentially trying out and saying that, okay, you know, how we can reduce the workload on the, the frontline workers who are taking orders. And, you know, we can do that via kiosk, via, you know, via the, the, the voice and things like that, via the mobile app. You can order via app inside the store as well, right? Very good example of essentially, um, you know, using, you know, kiosks and other technologies to essentially, you know, do the entire checkout process for essentially ordering the, the food, if you will. There's a, there's a good, you know, video, I'll, I'll not play the video right, right now, but you can look at the, you know, slides later on and, you know, check the, check the video, but here Lordial talks about how they really benefited from, you know, uh, from voice search queries, right? So what they, they did is that they went on and they said, okay, what are the people, you know, searching on Alexa, on Google and, you know, on, from the voice searches and they took that data and essentially, uh, you know, optimize their search engines, right? Optimize their content, you know, uh, to essentially benefit that particular search engines, right? So we are very, very used to optimize our content on the search, you know, profiles, which is happening on Google or Bing and other places on the search engines, but we don't really, you know, find on saying that, okay, what are people actually searching on via voices? And it, usually it's very long tail, you know, um, searches, right? But but these are these are kind of gold mines because it's very, very, low, uh, you know, competition in, in these places, right? So L'Oreal really benefited from this, you know, optimizing for, from, from these world searches. And you can look at the video later on. So right now about 55%, right, of Gen Z, 41% of the adults actually are using globally the voice searches. And this report is from Gartner in 20, 2019. I'm sure the number would have been increased uh, by now, especially, you know, after COVID, right? I don't have a... a the recent data, uh, but yeah, I'll, oh, sorry, I'll, you know, a, a majority of the uh, of, of of the human of you know Gen Z and adults are essentially using uh, the voice search on a daily basis, and you know where do they use it, right? So they use it, you know, when their hands are occupied in the kitchen, when they want faster results, uh, when they are typing on a certain device, when you know when there is a huge menu item and they say, okay, man, I'm getting confused. Right. Let me let me just use the voice to essentially find out the right applications. So that's that's a place. These are the voice searches are you know happening a lot, right? Um, in 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 these scenarios, right? And and Gen Z and this is a this is a you know study that happened in a few years back. Uh, what is happening with so contextual content via voice via different experience coming in is that right now the expectation of Gen Z is to essentially have the information with them in seven seconds, right? So they want personalized, timely, and quality content in seven seconds presented to them when they are essentially trying to consume a content, right? So if you're not optimizing your entire experience to present that um, information in seven seconds, you're going to lose their attention completely, right? Uh, uh, and that 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 is kind of the, you know, the holy grail. And every time we essentially build something for our clients, right? You know, that can we, you know, give this experience, give the, the, give the relevant experience in seven seconds to a client or not, right? To the, to the end users or not. 
uh, and not only b2c right b2b is you know getting disrupted as well right uh, you know in in the b2b there are expectations right now you know if you if you if you look at the b2b commerce and there's a huge wave of b2b commerce uh, you know ha- just happening after after covid uh, because you know people are now expecting the same experience with the b2b commerce is what they are having on amazon right they want personalized recommendation they want you know automated you know pricing uh, optimizations right they want to make sure that you know they 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 want to know when their order is getting get delivered just like they essentially know in 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 amazon right when they you know buy in amazon so it's not only you know b2c but b2b is you know getting disrupted as well and it really demands right multi experience marketing to you know to to actually you know serve your customers because you know somebody else is going to do it if you're not going to do it right in 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 the sector so i've like covered a lot right i've you know that there are like companies which are you know doing multi experience marketing there is you know you have to serve in 7 seconds uh the the whole ecosystem is disrupting where you know you you know if you don't you know start thinking about omni channel multi experience marketing you'll you'll be left behind right but how do we do this right so don't panic don't worry we'll got this we'll we'll help you to understand that how do you go around implementing this omni channel multi channel you know experience marketing uh, you know technologies ecosystem if you will so you know first of all let's understand right what what is multi channel and what is omni channel and why you should think omni channel and not multi channel right multi channel is when you know your account consumer is getting you know information from every touch point you know in a different different manner right in a in a siloed manner right so in the, when he's come, you know going to a store he's getting an experience is when he's visiting your mobile app is getting another experience this you know you know hearing on a radio is getting a different experience is reading a newspaper getting different experience web different experience right and it is not tied up you know uh, it is getting different it is getting a, a different kind of experience but there is no tied up with saying that okay what exactly that particular customer needs and there is no personalization there is no optimization there is no actual you know uh, thinking on you know how these different touch points will actually talk to each other to essentially create that one 360 degree personalized experience right in the multi channel marketing and that's why we should always think of omni channel and not multi channel and and that that's something that a lot of brands mistake a lot of time right so that omni channel means that you have to think customer in the middle right as a 360 degree and essentially bring all experience from there itself so you should know that okay what is you know essentially reading in a newspaper and looking at a particular ad right uh, and then you know when when he is looking at that ad take that experience from that ad itself like rei did and you know take it to the you know when he is visiting the website and then take that website experience to the mobile app when he is you know opening your mobile app take that you know same experience of a mobile app to essentially when he is walking to the store so how do you essentially you know take these touch points and you know you know and and tie it up together to you know make sure that you know he's not having a siloed experience but he's having a you know a, a cohesive experience when he's you know talking to your every touch point in you know from a from an experience point of view right and and if you look at that you know there are like many many other touch points which coming in right with uh, there are 3d touch points right with apple launching their you know visors recently which they did right and it with apple you know i'm sure they they would probably succeed more than what facebook did with with the vision pro right but you have digital displays you have you know 3d touch points right where it is sensory auditory touch uh, you know vision right you know in large 2d screens it's touch audio right uh, with uh, you know with laptops you have a typing you know and touch and audio right so there are like different inputs that you can see right is you know being used to essentially you know uh, interact with that particular you know experience touch point right so you when you're building when you, when you're building an experience you have to keep in mind that you are catering to each the inputs so when you're building an uh, experience for the let's say a visor the vision the you know the vision pro or the apple visor right you're making sure that you are catering for the voice for the audrey for the vision for the touch point you know all these touch points you know experience should be tied up it versus like a website 
where you know it's your it's only a you know matter of essentially touch where you are you know clicking the buttons right so it, it it's a very different um, you know experience touch point so and that becomes extremely important to start thinking and thinking how do we essentially cater in these particular different uh, you know models if you will um and and you know try and cover the entire journey right and say that okay you know what my you know when when you're creating user user experience right even if you don't have a multi experience touch points think about and think that okay what would my how would a particular customer would go on to alexa and you know interact with my brand how would it come in you know in the store and have a screen which you know where he will quickly convert particular kiosk or ipad and how will he interact in that right even if you don't have that right now and when you're defining this user journeys it become extremely important to be able to cover everything because a lot of time you might even not know uh, and but the customer is experiencing a different kind of experience at a different place like alexa for example right it might be talking about your brand you know or you know understanding about your brand even without you knowing about that itself right so try and uh, you know map the entire journey you know offline online voice in store and and try and figure out what what you know how people are behaving and you know interacting with your particular brand right uh, this this is another great video right again you can you know probably play once you look at the uh, slides um, you know after the talk but it, in this aws kind of very nicely you know shows that you know how the aws connect which is their call center tool you know can allow you to create this kind of experiences right there is a lady which is you know which her car car got broke and you know she's calling the customer care and you know how the customer care knows about her car model her car number where she is actually right now from geofencing right technology which we talked about in one of the use cases earlier and essentially giving her the very very good relevant experience right by calling you know the 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 the, the service center automatically and you know bringing her uh, the the service that she needs right so you know it's a very good ex- you know example of you know stateful customer experience that you can create with the current technology that is available today if you will um and so let's talk about that why right it, this is important right so when you know so you have the technology like aws to do it right you should create the the journey maps right from the customer journey point of view but why right why this is important and why you know you cannot wait till you you know you decide to go on alexa or decide to go on apple uh, you know you know wiser right and let's wait why don't why not wait for that the reason is that you know when you building your multi experience content content strategy right if you don't think about how will that particular experience would go in the future in that particular place right you would realize that the content that you are building today is going to be you know stale and it's not useful at that particular time the point of point of time and building great content is very very expensive right right you know you can't really have content writers start writing content for each and different other platform okay you know right let me write a different content for alexa let me write a different content for website different content for mobile different content for you know wiser you can't do that right it's just extremely expensive right and that's why you have to think your content of how that content would be essentially agnostic to the place where it's being projected and then that is why you start to start thinking around all the touch points that you know your customer can you know interact you know with your brand today or in the future right and you and and one of the reason is that it, is that you know why it's important is that because of the conversation legibility of the content what that means is that that can the content be understood without the context in the content right so for example if you are reading a particular article right you know that what what kind of article you are in you are into a product page which is talking about a benefit if you will right or you want to a case study which is talking about a particular client right if you if you are reading an article you know that you are on the case study page in a, on the website but when you are hearing that same content do you know that you are on the case study page and you are talking about a, you know the, the that whole information is about presenting a use case uh, you know which for, for a different different client and that's why you know context does does the content have the context or not it becomes extremely important and a lot of time what you know if you are not thinking around you know sensory audio touch points right you stop you or you don't really put context in the content and that you know essentially make your content 
inaccessible for all these different uh, you know touch points you know different other other place touch points um let's let's take an example right so if you look at a web based content right web based content is very high verbosity it's very screen based visual you can look into it there is very you know um, you know relationship centric you are hyperlinks you can click from one hyperlink to another right you have a very complex information ar architecture you can go back come you know go go to the next page you know go to the next link blah 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 right you can do a lot you know it's been evolved over the last you know multiple decades in in a very complex you know information architecture you know web based but if you look at the conversational content right from what you hear in the alexa it's extremely low verbose right there is no interface sorry <clears throat> there is zero interface right there is there is you know only verbal and you know oral interface it's always multi it's 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 always unidirectional and not a multi directional flow that, that means you cannot go back if you if you if you miss something right you you can't really go back and and oh let me just hear that back again right so you have to be extremely contextual to into the into onto into what you are saying right so the context precedes the content you can't have a, like a 500 word article and you know alexa start bab babbling about that particular article uh, to you you'll you'll get lost right about that particular content itself so that means your your content has to be you know extremely low verbose and then the context should precedes the content if you will right that become extremely important and that is why so this is a good example right that why you know when you are thinking when you are thinking of user journeys you should think of content strategy user journeys in a manner that you know you should understand that how this content would be used in the future um, um, right and not today in in the context of my website or or my mobile app right how the context is present in my particular content of not um couple of examples right uh, right uh, faq this is from the georgia gov site you know which is a very good case studies on you know how they implemented this you know contextual content you know um, examples and uh, you know somebody who um, you know uh, you know this particular person you know when he's reading the faq uh, they had an old faq which said the question said how long can i receive benefits and they were on a page of called a employment benefits page not employment essentially now when you're reading this particular fact how long can i receive benefits if you're reading on a website you know that you're on an employment benefit page so this benefit is talking about employment benefits right but if you're reading on you know if you're hearing on alexa then you don't know that it's on an employment benefit so they changed that to say how long can i receive employment benefits a very small subtle change but it makes hell lot of difference because now it's there is a clear context inside the particular content and it, it's you know it's agnostic to what page it is on right you know it's it's very clear that this is talking about employment benefits right another example right uh, they had an faq we said you can receive payments uh, through either a debit card or direct deposits and then there is a hyperlink which says learn more about payments now if you if you reading this it's totally fine you can you know know that there is a hyperlink and you can click to that hyperlink and go to the particular page but in this right you know if you're hearing you don't know anything right and you and it would say learn more about payment and you say okay is something coming no no so you can't really right figure out that there is a hyperlink when you are hearing that particular content right so what they did is that they essentially said you know take took this hyperlink and you know added this hyperlink on to receive payments um so that you know now you know if you are hearing you say you can hear you can receive payments through either a debit card or direct deposit which completes the sentence but when if you are if you are you know consuming the same content on the website you know that you receive uh, you have, you can know more about this payments if you click on receive payments if you will right so it's a very contextual content and now you know it can be used both on the website and on the alexa example right so right you, you know always understand that you know context precedes the content right so every time you are building a content strategy you have 7 seconds right uh, you know in terms of you know what you have to essentially you know put your use case put 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 what what do you want to say put what you want to essentially communicate in 7 second and that's all you have in terms of you know um, you know the, the the delivery of that particular content um uh, i have about 15 minutes left so I'll, i'll you know go a little fast for the rest of the slides but it's kind of self explanatory um you know we have uh, you know you have something called schema schema.org right and it's you know it's it's something that now thankfully a lot of lot of customers are waking up to it 
But if you're not using schemas in schema.org onto your content strategy, you are missing something very, very big. Because you know, schema.org is given preference on Google searches. It automatically creates Google Actions, which allows you to you know, uh, you know, find this information on Google Home or you know, when, when you're talking to the you know the Brad or all the all the chatbots, essentially, or or even let's say because it, it, it gives you a structure to your content, right? It gives you you know from from an unstructured content, it becomes a structured content, and then it's very easy for bots like an open AI or you know, Chat GPT or Google Brad, you know, to essentially understand that what exactly you want to say and communicate from this content, right? So it becomes really important to you know add schema to every content that you're building, right? It's a gold mine, right? Don't miss it, right? Uh, NYT cook, New York Times cooking, right? They essentially added you know seventeen thousand recipes over over the schema.org, and they had like a phenomenal traffic that you know essentially um, you know got you know because of because of that particular New York Times cooking you know uh, you know recipes uh, essentially. Um, Right, and when you're building this, right, uh, you know, um, you know, this, this, this context, right? This context also means that you know, you know, you can't really build context for every customer that is essentially coming in and you know, understanding the content, right? It's very, it's almost unthinkable, right? And that's where personalization comes in. That you know, when you know, you if you want to take your content strategy to the next level, you have to make sure that your content has the context. And it has a relevant context to the person reading it. And the way it would happen is that you add a personalization layer, which can understand that you know who is reading it, what time reading it, where is reading it, and essentially can give you the right context to that particular content, right? And you know, I'll not go into detail, but it's a it's a complete different talk in its own. <laughs> but yeah, think about personalization if you're if you're building your content strategy from a multi-experience touch point point of view, right? Think about building a customer data platform, right? Think about, you know, how you would use your, you know, first-party customer data, right? Second-party data, third-party data, right? And essentially, how do you would, you know, take that, you know, data essentially to, you know, personalize your experience on web, ad, mobile apps, email campaigns, you know, every place else. So start thinking about, you know, customer data as well, right? When you're building, you know, when you're building your marketing te technology stack, so that you can ensure that. You know, you you're creating contextual, personalized content, you know, experience for all 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 your customers or all your end users, if you will. So, you know, um, you know, we have like ten minutes, twelve minutes left. I wanted to leave some time for the for the Q and A, uh, but let's let's recap, right? Think omni-channel, not multi-channel, right? That's the biggest mistake that the you know the the brands the the you know the do, right? That they essentially say, oh, we have. You know, mobile app as well. We have a website as well. We, you know, we are there on Alexa and blah blah blah. But they are not thinking that. You know, are they taking the same experience that they are? Come, come. You know, somebody is looking at the website, right? To the ad on the magazine, to uh, you know, uh, to 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 the mobile app, to Alexa, to you know, in store. So start thinking omni-channel. Don't think multi-channel, right? Build content with context. Context precedes content, right? Always, always context precedes content. So if you have a clear context in place, right, your content would be useful. If not, then it's there's too many words, which is trying to convey something. And it's very, very difficult to essentially take that content and, you know, you know, to a different particular place from a content strategy point of view, if you will. Seven seconds is the key, right? If you're not delivering your content in seven seconds, you're gonna miss the Gen Z, um, you know, attention span completely. So seven seconds is the key, right? Remember that. And structured content is the first battle. So if you're not giving, you know, your content, your structure, right? So that you know all other other places like Google Bard and you know um, uh, ChatGPT understand it very well, then you're you know losing the battle. So make sure that you know if you're not doing anything else, make sure at least you're implementing schema.org, so you, so that your content is structured enough. To be able to understand and you know by by different other uh, you know ecosystems right which are you know delivering that particular content right and finally maintain states right maintain you know you know if somebody is coming in from a, you know a mobile app to website to you know to to uh, add on the magazine right 
maintain states understand that what were the what was the relevant experience that they had there and take that experience to the next level to the to the next platform right and that's where customer data platform become extremely essential for you to essentially capture all that data and then personalize that particular experience uh, going forward so that was a good 35 minute session again uh, you can find me on twitter at jimishra you can find me on linkedin at jimishra.com and you can find these slides uh, at bit.ly dxpmem um would love to take any questions if we have thank you gaura once again uh no questions at this point but uh, i do have a couple of questions to you um this is mostly open source uh, conference uh what is your yeah. tech stack can you elaborate what tools you use what what is open source what is proprietary sure um i i, I do see one more question from ruth um there actually right. but but let's take let's uh, take your question uh, sorry can you repeat that question again i was reading that so question so about and... your tech stack if you could uh, when it's not a secret like what do you what, what what's what's the backbone of of the tech stack yeah project? yeah we, we 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 do multiple tech stacks right so it's not one tech stack that we work with and and tech uh, is a is a good after thought that actually somebody should think about and it's not about tech right you can use you know open source cdps to like a segment or to uh, you know um, to acquire cdp to you know you can connect that with marketo to you know uh, other other technologies to motic right it doesn't matter right really you know so the, the 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 main thing is that you know if you're not thinking around and saying that you know how would my content strategy to to my um, my cdp would essentially work how am i collecting my data to and everything i mean if you if you have that in place then from a technology point of view you know you, you can you can essentially pick your pick your poison right and if you want if you're a microsoft shop right you can you know you would want to go to you know all the azure and you know you want to build a cdp on azure or you know go on to do sharepoint and stuff like that and you can implement everything on azure as well there's there's not stopping you uh, but if you if you if you want to pick one we try and stay with the composable nature of a technology stack right and we say okay make sure that you know for motic is a good example right you know it's composable it's open source right so you are not tied up right and say that okay we are not we you know we if we, this is one new experience apple launched a visor and wow we want to go and ahead and essentially start um you know giving the experience on that apple visor uh, in the next two weeks right if you want to do that it's very difficult to do that with somebody who's you know is who's proprietary who's not essentially you know uh, who will take their sweet course of time to essentially build that and if they build they might not build the exact way that you want right and things like that right and that's why you want to have an composable open ecosystem in place when you're building your tech stack so that if you want to launch an apple visor once apple launches and want to capture that audience uh, early right you want to be able to do that quickly uh uh you know why why something like more tech issue right so i don't know if that answers to it what you're asking yeah perfect thank you uh let's put uh ruth's question on the on the screen where do you think modic needs to improve when it comes to omni channel and good yeah sorry good no i just want to say that we understand that we are very heavily into email invested into email and we just touching the the text partially but like what do you think uh, where could we which direction we should develop no sure absolutely so I, i think it's a it's a it's a hard question to answer right away right but i think i think the 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 i again going back to going back to my slides right the idea is that you know if you are you able to create contextual information that can be presented to the end user right in the end, right so in terms of omni channel right are you you know is, is when when you're presenting the content right if if motic goes in a direction and my wish is the motic should go into the direction where they start thinking of saying that how do we become extremely agnostic to the touch point that the end user is having let's say in store right there is an in store experience happening and with motic it is open it's composable right so how do we essentially start collecting user information data start creating inside content to which can be presented in a store in kiosk which can be presented on email which is happening right now which can be you know presented in a on a on a apple watch 
in a on a you know on a you know in the store in 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 you know everywhere else right so how do you essentially start thinking around that level becoming you know agnostic uh, from a content structure right from a from a customer data point of view right and not only thinking email i think that's the direction that you know um, motic should take and should go and once that happens then it doesn't matter right what channel that you are looking at and what channel you want to present on right you can when you're creating that content copy inside the email you can take that content copy and present it into uh, you know um, on on the apple watch as well or 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 a store as well at any point of time right so once once that becomes a little agnostic and once you start doing that context extremely become would become important right on saying that okay does that content completely talks about what it wants to talk about i'm if i'm not reading that email and would i understand what that content wants to talk about right and you know if i'm presenting that to in in the store so once you have that view where customer is saying okay i'm if i want to connect my store pos systems right i can put that content inside that they will start thinking around um, you know different uh, ways of you know essentially putting context in that particular content i don't know if that that answers ruth what you were asking <laughs> i think so i will have one more question i'm asking this everyone because you know everybody's talking about chat gpt and 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 sure. now you brought up the apple visor so is your company like do do you your does your company already think about these these future tools how they should be implemented and what do you think the near future will bring us and this includes the visor and that includes also chat gpt you mentioned how expensive it is to write content chat gpt yep. is just really addressing that so what is your opinion about this see the the here is a thing right um, you know so yes right uh, we definitely are uh, you know looking at chat gpt and other other technologies tools and you know um, you know and trying to leverage them in multiple ways right a uh, couple of ways where we are you know we are leveraging that uh, is actually email email campaigns uh, we have a very large um, i can't probably name them right now but you know we have a very large uh, you know national client um, at material where they are struggling with you know 35 different personas across all the us states right and they are trying to ramp up their content creation right across different each campaign right and there is you know if you look at 35 different personas and you know each personas want to have a different kind of personalized campaign across different states because they essentially serve to small and medium businesses across us how do you scale that content it's become extremely you know uh, expensive right so we are actually you know building um, some chat gpt plugins where you know we have a Uh, you know rather than them creating content initially we are creating content via chat gpt and then allowing them to review that content so that they can tweak the content rather than creating that content right so they can just tweak the content and send that campaigns out which is very um, geo personalized to particular states so if you are in new jersey you are getting a different kind of campaign versus you are if you are on a, you know let's say detroit or a, you know massachusetts you are kind of getting a different campaign and then there are different 35 different personas right you know in in each state which are getting that campaign so how do you you know how do you so this this i believe is a very very low hanging fruit that we are already implementing right now and i think would become really really uh, you know useful in the future right so with the llm models right like chat gpt the large language models right you essentially have a wealth of information which can be you know which essentially creates this content quirky content easily right it nine you know i would say 7 out of 10 times it's accurate still 30% of time it's not accurate right it's not probably the right content for you but at least it allows you to you know reduce that human intervention if you will right uh, to you know essentially you know start ramping up the content creation so the content creation industry is definitely being disrupted no doubt about that uh, from a, from a chat gpt point of view and for every tool like motic or any other email marketing or any kind of tool it becomes really important to say that okay how do i you know essentially start helping my customers in you know ramping up the content creation right while they are creating these different campaigns uh, from an email to you know other other places so that's first but secondly you know i think what what is important is that that if i if i if i just you know for a second start stop thinking about um, as a, as an agency and just look at the you know um, you know from a, from a customer point of view from a brand point of view right the the important the question is not that you know how will this disrupt the question is that 
people are actually using it right people are you know going on to you know chat gpt on brad on 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 alexa and all the places and they are interacting with your brand and now the question is do you want them to interact in an incorrect way with your brand and have incorrect information or do you want to make sure that you know if they are interacting and trying to understand about your brand the information which is out there is the correct information or not and that becomes the key right that you don't want to have a misinformation about your brand about your products about your information about your services out there in the chat gpt world which you do not control right you cannot control that 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 ecosystem if you will right and that is why when you're building your content strategy when you're building your you know content right now you make want to make sure that you build your content in a way <clears throat> that it's very easy for chat gpt and the uh, brat to understand that what your content says right and if you don't do that then you know you it, it's going to say a different thing which is not right for your brand which can even go viral right in this this scenario in in this ecosystem right in so imagine right some anti semitic <laughs> conversation happening around it just picks a different different damn thing right so it become really important for you to think about that right today right with with chat gpt but it's not a question that how it disrupts this stuff it's a question is that if it disrupts would you be ready or not right and that becomes an important you know important question to answer right now that's that's actually that's super interesting so we don't only have to uh think about seo or what google thinks about us but we have to think what the language models think about yeah. us and maybe try to govern that information as well yeah and yeah. and, and the, see, the point is that with seo right you you still have people you know would not make an opinion because it's it giving you an option to essentially come in look at a particular art, article link and then go in read that article make your own opinion and about it with chat gpt there is an opinionated answer that is coming up to a particular question right now that means that you know the somebody who accessing that answer has already made that opinion right away once he's reading that answer now is that opinion right or wrong is something that you have to worry about today right if you don't then you know it can become to a become a disaster at some point of time very good point very good point okay uh there are no, no more questions at this point well thank you so much once again uh gorav this this has been really great um and uh, dear viewers uh i will see you in 13 minutes uh, with the next session uh, i believe with leo schuler so see you in a bit bye thanks joy